Hi, I'm Russ. Uh, welcome to our latest video where we're going to see how we can get the full SharePoint list and library experience through Microsoft Teams. Now, before we go too much further, just a little bit about 3Grow in case you're not familiar with who we are. Uh, we're a SharePoint specialist training organization based in Melbourne, Australia, uh, offering uh, public and private training courses in all aspects of SharePoint, Office 365, the Nintex tools and live tiles, etc. Uh, throughout Asia Pacific. And a little bit about me, uh, I'm Managing Director of 3Grow. Uh, I've been a trainer for over 15 years. The last 11 of those years have been spent specialising in SharePoint. So what we're going to be doing more specifically within this video is first of all just having a look at the default setup that we get within Microsoft Teams once we connect Teams to uh, an Office 365 group connected SharePoint site. What we'll find is that uh, within Teams, once you've connected your SharePoint site and therefore your Office 365 group, uh, the Files tab will be present automatically and that will pull information from the Documents library that's pre-created within the SharePoint site that sits behind the scenes of uh, the Office 365 group and therefore the team. We do also have the ability to add from further cloud storage locations, such as SharePoint libraries, Dropbox, Box, Google Drive, places like that. Specifically with regard to the SharePoint libraries, however, uh, we get pretty limited functionality uh, compared to what we'd experience through the browser within your SharePoint lists and libraries. So what we'll do is a demonstration of what we get by default within Microsoft Teams and therefore the limitations of that. What we'll then do is have a look at how we can add SharePoint lists and libraries, not just from the team site that's connected to this team, but also from any other SharePoint site within your tenant in order to get the full list and library experience, such as the toolbar, content types, all the views, uh, the columns, the filter pane, the information panel, all that rich functionality that is so beneficial to the users when accessing those lists or libraries through their web browser. Okay, so just to review what we have already, uh, I have a, a modern SharePoint site here, which is therefore connected to an Office 365 group. Within this site, we have the standard lists and libraries that come with the, uh, the team site, uh, such as documents, the shared notebook, and so on. I've also created a, a meeting documents library. Within this meeting documents library, I have added a couple of content types. So when we therefore go to create a new document, via the toolbar, notice that we do have the option to create uh, from agenda or minutes. Associated with each of these content types, we have an appropriate document template, as well as the uh, relevant metadata columns. I've pre-populated this with a couple of documents, just so we can see um, the, uh, the, the rich functionality in action. I've also added a couple of views. So I've got a view which groups those documents by the meeting location and another view that filters to show just minutes, uh, then groups by the scribe property. I've also created uh, a contacts list simply based on the out of the box uh, contacts list template in SharePoint. Now, when we open up Teams, I have already connected the uh, SharePoint site to Teams. What we therefore get is the general channel and I've also created a channel called staff appraisals. What that will do back in the SharePoint site is it will create folders within the default documents library for each of those channels and therefore automatically filter the content into the files tab within the appropriate channel. So for example, when we go to the files tab, choose to upload a document. I'll just choose any file in here. Now, because I'm on the general tab within Teams, it will be uploading that to the general folder within the documents library. If I were to then open up the staff appraisals channel and create a new document, notice we have the option to create from new Word, Excel or PowerPoint. Simply give it a name. The document is created and we get the Word Online experience within the Teams interface. 
if we then go back to the SharePoint site, open up the general folder within the documents library, here we'll see the expenses form and into the staff appraisals folder, we'll see the test document. As I mentioned previously, we can add further tabs within our team. So for example, I could add further document storage locations by choosing the document library option. It will then present me with a list of possible sites. If you don't see the site that you're looking for, what we can do is simply enter the URL. We can then choose the appropriate site and from there we can select the relevant library. I'm going to choose the meeting documents library, give it an appropriate name and save. What we'll then find is on the general channel within Teams, we have our meeting documents library. And yes, we see the contents of that library. However, when we choose to create new, we don't see our content types. We also don't see any of the metadata columns. We don't see any of the views or any of that other rich functionality. In order to achieve that functionality, we do have to open that library through SharePoint within our web browser, which kind of defeats the object of using Teams a little bit. So what I'm going to do is just remove that tab. And I'm going, now going to show you a different way of adding that document library into uh, Teams. So the first thing I'll do is to go back into the document library within my browser. And what I'm then going to do is copy the URL of that library, making sure we don't include forms slash all items on the end of the URL, because all that's specifying is the view that's currently in place. It's not actually part of the location of that library. Now, when we choose to add a tab, instead of choosing to add a document library, I'm going to choose to add a website. All we then do is apply an appropriate name, paste the URL of the library, hit save, and Teams very cleverly trims away the title bar, the left navigation, and things like that just leaving us with uh, the toolbar, the search box, our views, and you will notice that we do have the option to utilize our content types, etc. We get the exact same situation when adding lists. So you'll notice that when we choose to add content, there is no option for lists as such. So what we're going to do is again, back into the browser, open up our contacts list and copy the URL of that list back into Teams, again, choose to add a website, enter the name, paste the URL, and again, we get the full rich SharePoint list experience through Microsoft Teams. So to summarize, we've had a look at a review of what we get by default within Microsoft Teams, such as the files tab, which pulls information from the documents library, uh, separated into folders based on the channels that we have set up within Teams. What we noticed is that we can also add further SharePoint uh, libraries or Dropbox locations, but we get very limited functionality compared to what we see within the browser in SharePoint. So what we then did was copied the URL of the appropriate lists or libraries, and then added those as websites rather than adding as a, as a SharePoint document library. That therefore gives us the full rich experience that we also see through the web browser. Thank you for watching. I hope you found that useful. Please feel free to get in touch if you have any questions on this video, or if you have any suggestions on videos you'd like to see.